It's a tie as we go on to our question round. Uh, this opens up the show to members of the studio audience. They can ask any question they like uh, for the panel here. Uh, put your hand up if you've got a question. Anybody in the audience? Yes. Gentleman there in the frilly shirt. <laughs> What's your question, please? Do you agree with the aim of the Jubilee 2000 movement to cancel third world debt? Graham. Uh, yes, I do, because then we wouldn't owe all that money to America. <laughs> Anyone else got a contribution on this? Uh, well, these are what? the kind of ridiculous questions we've come to expect from ordinary people. Um, <laughs> but what clearly, about uh, third huge, world? If you have a huge, if you owe a lot of money to somebody, the best thing is to lie about it. Obviously, isn't it? Yeah. Certainly on a, on a mortgage application. That's, yeah. that's what I mean. <laughs> I would suggest that, for example, Brazil, you know, when the World Bank's come calling, they should put the lights out, hide behind the SETI. Mm. <laughs> That'd be a good idea. A future move to, to get rid of third world debt would be possibly 0% finance. <laughs> <laughs> I think I see where you're coming from yeah? on that one. Yeah, okay. uh, has anyone else got a question? G gentleman there? Um, why is it uh, 75 MPs attended the Brit Awards? Well, it's important that we keep in touch with the, with the modern... Brit Skiffle, I think it's called. Yes. It's, it's marvellous toe-tapping stuff, and we're all, we're all yes. very much for it yeah. in government. I'm the, I'm the Prime Minister of the rock and roll generation. I, I might not have smashed up a hotel room and thrown the telly out the window, but I've certainly phoned down to reception to complain that the trousers the press wasn't powerful enough. Yes. Uh, I happen to know that William Hague was turned away for wearing trainers. Yes. But I'd like to congratulate the, the Janet Street preachers on their, on their marvellous... Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Very, very lovely big teeth. Good. Yes. <laughs> Any more questions? There was a lady there, sorry, with an enormous hand and enthusiasm. Yes. Do you think women should get tampax on the National Health Service? <laughs> well, now there's a, there's a serious do question. We, do we really have to bring nasty biblical ladies' things into the discussion? <laughs> I think it is quite clear in Leviticus that ladies' monthly front bottom things are an abomination. <laughs> And the Lord, and you should be set aside from the tribe for a week for even mentioning it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, and that big blue stain you get. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> so is that a no then? Yes. Uh, any more questions? Uh, um, well, there's a gentleman over there. Does the big white cat that appeared in the classic 1970s comedy series The Goodies prove that GM food has been around for decades? <laughs> Um, <clears throat> we might go to Graham Garden on this one. I, I don't know why. I think it proves that gullible members of the public have been around. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on to a round called I Couldn't Disagree More. Uh, can Graham disagree with anything and everything thrown at him by the opposition? This is a vital skill of any politician. Uh, Jeremy and Linda, have any reasonable policies or statements for him to disagree with? Prisons should not be holiday camps. <laughs> No, I couldn't disagree more. Um, prisons are houses of correction. There must be an element of punishment. And I, I, I went to Pentonville recently, um, a reunion, you understand. And um, when I saw the misery inflicted on those men at the Caribbean night by the pool in a thunderstorm <laughs> and the sheer humiliation of the Nobly Knees contest, I could see that these men were repaying their debt to society. Yes. All right, I think I follow that. The public should not be forced to eat Frankenstein foods. <laughs> well, I couldn't disagree more. They're not as bad as they're made out to be. I mean, I was talking to Brussels last night and they said, hey, we're sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> eat us, that's our job. <laughs> yes. Funerals are no place for balloon animals. No, I couldn't disagree more. I mean, funerals are solemn occasions, often very sad and very gloomy. And anyone who's sat through the dismal repertoire of so-called children's entertainers making things out of the room, that's perfectly in keeping with the mood. <laughs> All right. Jeremy? Elton John has not got the hair of a vibrant young schoolboy. <laughs> no, you're wrong. I was there when he bought it. <laughs> That's the hair, not the schoolboy. Um, yeah. <laughs> Those are your words, Clive, not mine. <laughs> we're racing, we're racing uh, towards the end. The final vote is almost upon us. Desperate vote grabbing, we call this. Just buzz or ring if you can think of a policy you think might swing a couple of votes in your favour. Capital punishment to be reintroduced for street entertainers. <laughs> We will declare Crinkley Bottom the new Kurdish homeland. 
Yes, Graham? We shall appoint a working party to uh, cut down the number of fly-on-the-wall docu-soaps. And you can see how we get on on Thursday on the BBC <laughs> Two at half past nine. Yep. We promise easier numbers on Countdown. <laughs> Yes, Jeremy. We'll bring in a, a new kind of gladiators where it, if the black gladiators have to be called things like Nightshade and Saracen and, and, and Shadow, then the white ones should have to be called Pasty and Tipex. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring an end to punishment beatings in all Westminster brothels. <laughs> Shame! Yes. A government health warning on clowns. <laughs> <laughs> We think that all children's entertainers should have to register at their local police station. <laughs> yes. Coloured barcodes. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, that's uh, the division bell there. And uh, let's see, that was the last opportunity they had to, to gather your vote. Now, this is the big one. This is the actual election. You now have to really concentrate and decide who you prefer. If you prefer the red team, led by Jeremy, then vote red. If you prefer the blue team, led by Graham, then vote blue. And do it now. <laughs> Great time, well done, Jeremy and Linda. Okay, well. <laughs> Jeremy, your team member here, Linda, has made all the difference. I don't think you've won uh, a recent election for some time now. It must be inclusion. Yes, the team well, I, I think that the ladies have a, have a certain <laughs> appeal. Yes. Um, but love them or hate them, you can't live without them or with them. In <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, blue team. I think we're being looked at very superficially, mm. uh, on face value. Yes, I yeah. shouldn't have worn this tie and he shouldn't have worn that suit. <laughs> <laughs> That's all from If I Rule the World, it's me, Clive Good night. Good night. Good night. Coming up next on BBC Two, the man who made Hannibal Lecter a household name, director of The Silence of the Lambs, Jonathan Demme, talks about his movie-making in just a moment.